Hello, Jakey and Ariel. This is another uh, reading time. And I think that this book, uh, I think Ariel might find it more interesting. But I think that, um, Jakey, I think you would like it too. Okay. Um, here is the book is called Women in Science. Uh, 50 Fearless Pioneers Who Changed the World. And this is written and illustrated by Rachel Ignatovsky, is the author. Okay, so it's about 50 women, so I'm going to have to probably break it into several recordings. Uh, today, I'm just going to read you the introduction to the book, okay? And then I'll read um, maybe two or three uh, stories of women um, over time. Right, because this is quite a, a, a big book, and then, then it has 50 women in it. So, all right, so the first one is introduction. It goes Nothing says trouble like a woman in pants. That was the attitude in the, in the 1930s. Any, when Barbara McClintock wore slacks at the University of Missouri. It was considered scandalous. Even worse, she was feisty, direct, incredibly smart, and twice as sharp as most of her male colleagues. She did her she did things her way to get the best results, even if it meant working late with her students, who were breaking curfew. If you think these seems like good qualities for a scientist, then you're right. But back then, these weren't necessarily considered good qualities in a woman. Her intelligence, her self-confidence, her willingness to break rules, and of course, her pants were all considered shocking. Barbara had already made her mark on the field of genetics with her groundbreaking work at Cornell University, mapping chromosomes using corn. This work is still important in scientific history. Yet, while working at the University of Missouri, Barbara was seen as bold and unladylike. The faculty excluded her from meetings and gave her little support with her research. When she found out that they would fire her if she got married and there were, was no possibility of promotion, she decided she had had enough. Risking her entire career, she packed her bags with no plan except an unwillingness to compromise her worth. Barbara went off to find her dream job. This decision would allow her to joyously research all day and eventually make the discovery of jumping genes. This discovery would win her a Nobel Prize and forever change how we view genetics. Barbara McClintock's story is not unique. As long as human has asked questions about our world, men and women have looked to the stars, under rocks, and through microscopes to find the answers. Although both men and women have the same thirst for knowledge, women have not always been given the same opportunities to explore the answers. In the past, Restrictions on women's access to education were not uncommon. Women were often not allowed to publish scientific papers. Women were expected to grow up to exclusively become good wives and mothers while their husbands provided for them. Many people thought women were not, not as smart as men. The women in this book had to fight these stereotypes to have the careers they wanted. They broke rules, published under pseudonyms, and worked for the love of learning alone. When others doubted their abilities, 
they had to believe in themselves. When women finally began gaining wider access to higher education, there was usually a catch. Often, they would be given no space to work, no funding, and no recognition. Not allowed to enter the university building because of her gender. Lise Meitner did her radiochemistry experiments in a dark basement. Without funding for a lab, physicist and chemist Marie Curie handled dangerous radioactive elements in a tiny, dusty shed. After making one of the most important discoveries in the history of astronomy, Cecilia Payne Gaposchkin still got little recognition, and for decades, her gender limited her work as a technical assistant. Creativity, persistence, and a love of discovery were the greatest tool these women had. Marie Curie is now a household name, but throughout history, there have been many other great and important women in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM. Many did not receive the recognition they deserved at the time and were forgotten. When thinking of physics, we should name not only Albert Einstein, but also the genius mathematician, Emmy Noether. We should all know that it was Rosalind Franklin who discovered the double helix structure of DNA, not James Watson and Francis Crick. While admiring the advances in computer technology, let us remember not only Steve Jobs or Bill Gates, but also Grace Hopper, the creator of modern programming. Throughout history, many women have risked everything in the name of science. This book tells the stories of some of these scientists from ancient Greece to the modern day, who is in the face of no, said, try and stop me. So that's the introduction. And so next time I will read you um, a couple of women. The Hypatia is one. Uh, Maria Sibella Marian Mer is another one. And Wang Zenyi. Okay. So in next, next uh, reading, I will do that. I hope you, you enjoyed it. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Love you. Mwah.